What's up guys, Kenneth here and today we're going over generalized motor programs and feedback. So first off, what is a generalized motor program? Richard Smith's schema theory defines generalized motor programming as an abstract rep representation of the movement pattern being stored in memory. This representation contains the information necessary to perform a movement and motor programs containing general rules can be applied in different circumstances. So that is key. Generalized motor programs can be applied in different circumstances. In this theory, we have invariant features and parameters. We are going to look at both of these in terms of a basketball shot. Invariant features never change from movement to movement. These include the sequence of action, relative timing, and relative force. Sequence of actions. The first invariant feature that remains constant from one performance to another is the sequence of taking a shot. In order to take a shot, the player must take the following steps as shown in this video. Balance. The feet with the shoe of the corresponding shooting arm are pointed to the rim. Elbows. Form a right angle with the shooting arm and the non-shooting arm. Extension. Extend the elbow through the shot. Follow through. Hold the top of the shooting hand towards the rim after the ball is released. A simple way to remember this is the acronym BEEF. No. Relative timing. The second invariant feature that does not change from one performance to another is relative timing. Here's a chart listing the timing of a basketball shot. The shot can be broken down into four parts, as we talked about earlier. Balance takes about 10% of the overall time. Setting the elbows takes about 20%. Extension of the elbows takes about 30%, and following through takes about 40% of the overall time to perform the movement. Relative force. The third and invariant feature is relative force. When we say relative force, we mean that the force required to remove a specific ob object remains constant from one performance to another. Here we see an example of the force needed to shoot a basketball and the force needed to shoot a tennis ball. The required force never varies from one task to another as long as the weight of the object does not change. Parameters. Parameters include features that can be modified from one performance to another. These include overall duration, overall force, direction of the movement, and muscle selection. Overall duration. The speed at which a basketball player performs a shot. This can be a quick release or a slow setup to a release. In the first two examples, you can see that the player takes his time to go through all the stages of a basketball shot. Balance, setting the elbows, extension, and follow through. In, this, in the last example, you can see that the player speeds up the shot and the release. This changes the overall duration of a shot and is a parameter when it comes to basketball shots. Overall force. The overall force required to perform a movement in the first example, we see a player shooting a layup. This requires very little force as the ball is already close to the hoop upon release and all the player really has to do is lay the ball against the backboard in order to put it into the hoop. In the second example, we see the player use his legs and arms much more 
to create the greater force necessary to complete a three-point shot. Movement Direction The movement of the body and the object can change from one shot to another. First, you have a shot from the left, from center, and from right. As you can see, the body must change position relative to the hoop in order to hit a specific target. If the body did not adapt, the shot would not end up in the right place. Muscle selection. This is the last parameter, uh, which is muscle selection. Different movements require different recruitment of muscles. In the first example, the player is taking a floater. This requires very little force from the upper body and greater force from the lower body to propel the shot forward and above defenders. In the second example, we can see the same player taking a step back shot. The step back shot requires much greater force from the upper body to propel the ball forward as the body fades away from the hoop. The lower, the lower body is not used as much in this example as the upper body. Feedback. Feedback can be internal or external. Internal comes from within the body. External comes from sources outside the body. Internal feedback. Internal feedback comes from within the body. Types of internal feedback include the body's senses. Sight, touch, smell, hearing, and taste are all examples of feedback. Proprioception is a type of internal feedback. One definition of proprioception is an awareness of position, and movement of the body. There are three areas of sensation that guide the body in understanding its position in space. Touch, vision, and vestibular sensation. Proprioceptive reflexes help stabilize the body by giving it balance, especially when that balance is interrupted during a slip or fall. Information is received within the sensors, uh, which activates muscles and lig ligaments that help athletes know joint angles during movement. External feedback. External feedback comes from a source outside the body. Types of external feedback include hearing advice from coaches or teammates, watching film, or viewing presentations of correct movement patterns. Two critical types of external feedback include knowledge of results and knowledge of performance. Knowledge of results. One definition of knowledge of results is information provided after a response that tells of the learner's success in meeting the environmental goal. Examples include a field goal kick, missing wide left, a soccer kick, missing wide right, and a basketball going through the hoop for a game-winning shot. Knowledge of performance. One, de one definition of knowledge of performance is the feedback on the athlete's actual movements. Separated from the results of those movements, knowledge of performance focuses on form and execution. Examples include the following statements. You released the ball late to your receiver, you passed too quickly to your teammate, and you forced the offense right instead of left on defense. Feedback is crucial in order to, for movement success in sports. There are at least six different ways that coaches and teachers can give instructive feedback. Number one, qualitative feedback. Measuring the quality of a performance. Examples include the words good, bad, great, and mediocre. Additionally, qualitative feedback includes information on intangibles that cannot always be measured. Keep your eye on the ball, read the defense, def extend your efforts are all examples of this. Number two, quantitative feedback. 
Numbers indicating performance examples include speed, force, reaction time, and accuracy. Number three, descriptive knowledge of performance. This type of feedback only describes the errors that athletes make during the performance. Prescriptive knowledge of performance. Unlike descriptive knowledge of performance, prescriptive point points out errors in performance and gives verbal directions on how to actually correct those errors. Number five, concurrent feedback. Feedback given during the actual performance. And number six, terminal feedback. Feedback given after the actual performance.